Hey all and welcome back. Tonight we're going to paint a still life in Art Rage. should be a lot of fun. and talk a little bit about some of just the construction of this drawing here that I have kind of pre-sketched. I'm using vertical, diagonal, and horizontal lines just to make all the shapes, even these kind of more complicated curving shapes like the handle for example. Um, looking at negative space and just the, like here you can see just looking at the negative space that traces kind of that interior triangle there. It helps me find the shape of the vessel. Um, also just looking for anything I can grab onto that will keep things simple. I'm just working from kind of basic ovals and lemons and then just a lot of long diagonal lines for the, the vessel there. Um, really important in the beginning if you can to block, to block in with just these simple lines where the shadows are going to be it helps you find the light direction really early on. These interior contours are really great and in the sense that they kind of help you find your way even before you start putting the value in. So, um, One quick kind of compliment to Art Rage, I think that the workspace here is just super awesome. The um, ability to have your reference picture so big and be so conveniently out of the way from your painting space, in addition to having your panels for your settings, your brushes. Here you can see some of my favorite settings for my oil brush. I'll just leave that up for a little bit so you can check it out. Um, Love the oil brush so much in Art Rage. It just has a fluency and a, kind of a way of moving on the canvas that feels a lot like traditional paint to me. It's one of my very, very favorite um, just default digital tools. And it'll be what I do most of the work with in this picture. You can see that this line that I just drew down there, I'm going to remove. And that's because I'd much rather make the edges of my picture uh, out of a bunch of varied direction and length of marks as opposed to putting one big line down which will just kind of make the edge itself feel very uh, dry and simple as opposed to um, what it could be if you let that, that edge evolve kind of organically through the mark making. Um, this part of the picture is really kind of uh, mundane in, in the best way. I was thinking about uh, the Barcelona just won a huge soccer game today in the Champions League and I was thinking about Neymar and there was a so some sort of test that they had done looking at his brain waves or brain activity while he was playing soccer as compared to the brain waves brain activity of the more amateur players and you know the hypothesis was that you know before the test they thought well we're going to see Neymar who's this famous you know world famous you know top class world class footballer they're going to say he's going to have you know off the charts his brain activity is going to be crazy um, and especially compared to these um, maybe inferior uh, competitors, you know, these people without as much experience or, or technical ability. But what they found and what they were surprised to find is that his brain waves, his brain activity was actually quieter, uh, vastly quieter than the more amateur players and to the degree that at first they were trying to figure out what was going on and, and they later kind of figured out that when Neymar plays, his brain is almost shut off. It's, it's as if he's playing with just pure instinct or it's all automatic for him because he's got such a rich familiarity with what he's doing that his mind literally shuts down and, and everything goes quiet. And as an athlete, I sort of know that feeling, I'm sure not anywhere near the caliber that Neymar understands it, but um, that sort of quiet, that that comes when you're so deeply connected to what you're doing that there's no thought at all. It's just automatic. Um, I love this part of a painting because it can sort of afford even a, uh, an amateur painter that sort of immersion. And um, when you can remember what you're doing is just very, very simple. You're just grabbing color, recording color, putting color roughly where it needs to go. It can be this this deep and connected and sort of immersive place where your mind can go really, really quiet. For me, in the beginning of a picture, my, my brain is, is not quiet. It usually feels sort of the turbulence of the whole day. You know, a lot of things start coming up as though like creatures coming out of the water, you know, and, and they surface and, and the surface of the water is full of ripples and, and turbulence and then they recede and they surface and recede and there's another one and then it recedes. But after a while, and sometimes it's around a half hour, um, 
everything then starts to go really, really quiet. And in that quiet space, that's, you know, that, that kind of quintessential, I don't know what time it is, I don't know what day it is, I don't know where I am, and everything just kind of falls away. And um, a lot of times it's this part of the painting that, that does that for me. One of the things I really, really love about painting, and, and as you can see right now, we're just moving on to this next phase of the painting where I pulled out the palette knife using everything on default settings. I'm just knocking down, I'm blocking in, you know, still with oil brush, but then I'll also go back and forth between that and knocking down some of the areas with that palette knife. The palette knife is, is a brilliant tool, and you can see here with the settings I use sometimes in Art Rage that the paint is pretty thin on the brush. And so when I start using the palette knife, sometimes it'll get really thin and you start to see through the canvas or through the paint into the canvas and you get these white streaky marks. In order to sort of circumvent that, I'll just duplicate the layer and then work just on that top layer. And I have enough paint there sitting beneath that first layer on the bottom layer to sort of mitigate any of that streaking that you might get when you're doing your blending. So that's sort of a technical tip. But um, back to the, the conceptual stuff. One of the things I love about painting so much is the way that it, it is a, an amazing vehicle for that quiet. Um, and one of the reasons I love to practice painting so much is it, I find I think it's that pursuit of that quiet that I love as is almost as an inseparable part of, of the experience. Like it might be that I love that as an integral part of what I love about painting is that quiet. And it is similar to what I love about athletics or what I love about, you know, hiking or, or things like that or, or in, in sort of a different way of reading. But um, I wanted to talk about that for a second because I think, I think there's some real magic in that. And um, let me just pause on that, that point for a second and just point out that we're starting to add in the really cool little highlights and these decadent little elements that make everything feel really three-dimensional and um, I always hold off on the, that part of the painting for a long time because I feel like that's really the cherry on top of the sundae or um, you know if, if you're like in a new relationship that's the that's like that your favorite restaurant or that special place you know you don't you don't take someone out to to a date to that place on, on the first date you always wait a little bit because you want to save it for something kind of special and um, it's it's what brings things into that really full rich three-dimensional space that lets it really come to life and so if I can get the painting to a good place without having to add those without even letting without letting myself add those highlights um, but then get to that point you know kind of at, here at the end it sort of it takes all the good that I've done and it just transforms it and it, it becomes really alive but if I want to go back really quick to the um, the point I was trying to make, which is I think in my whole life, no matter what I'm doing, um, but especially in painting, what I'm the reason I love to practice so much, the reason I love doing simple still lives, you know, just painting a single apple, or you know, no matter what it is, I just love painting. Period. Because the better I get at the craft of painting. The more intuitive it becomes, the more quiet my brain comes, or becomes the, the more lost I am in that whole process, the more simple the whole thing becomes, the more free I am in the experience. It's almost like floating in a void as I paint. And I can be without any thought, I can just react um, automatically. Um, and, and it. I think I'm pursuing that almost all the time, consciously or, or, or subconsciously, that's what I'm pursuing. And so the more I can learn about painting, the more I can study the light, the more I can study how shadows work, the more I can study texture or shape or form or, or anything that I can get my hands on when it comes to subject matter, I'm going to do it because the more I learn, the more intuitive everything is and the more quiet I can I can be as I work and I think that's what maybe mastery feels like and 
I think it can be something that happens in painting or it can be something that happens in, in kind of anything that you do routinely or religiously in your life. You know, anything you sort of, I mean, I, you have to dedicate yourself to it, but I think it, it's absolutely worth it. And the cool thing is, is not only is it, does it afford you that really rich, quiet, stabilizing experience as you work, but your, your, your outcomes also become so much more fulfilling. And so here you can see that you know, we're getting somewhere with this painting and it's, it's just a, you know, an, a nice picture of some fruit and, and a pitcher with some sunlight coming in the window. And while that may not be this a very decadent sort of thing to paint, like, there's a richness to it. There's something so earthy and, and warm about all the colors in there. And it's really attractive. And if you can just throw yourself into that, studying the light and the shadows and the way that, that light is bouncing all around between the, the lemons and, and the way that reflect light is changing the colors of the shadows in surprising ways, um, even painting something simple becomes really alive. And you get the reward on both sides. You get the aliveness of the subject, you know, something kind of inert that then just blossoms in front of you. But then also you get that kind of um, it's a thrilling sort of quiet when everything becomes still inside and outside of you and you're painting in a sort of automatic subconscious way and and it feels like bliss and so um, whether you're you're really a dedicated artist or you find that sort of blissfulness in, in another capacity that that's just something that I was thinking about a lot this week as I was working on one thing or another and working on this simple still life, I just thought that it was a good time to talk about it. Hearkening back to one of the high school era when I was talking with one of my good friends, Troy, I remember him saying, why do you paint? And we had this discussion, and I remember him saying that his answer to why do we paint is to learn. And I thought that was probably the best answer I've ever heard anyone say. So, um, hope you're enjoying the learning and hope you're having a lot of fun digging into whatever it is you're digging into this week with your painting.